Where is he hospitalized? They air flighted him to you to Chapel Hill, I think. He's in Chapel Hill. He's in Chapel Hill. I can't remember. Okay. What's Grant's last name? Do you remember? I'm trying to find the name. That's okay. It's just Grant. I don't know if I Well, we'll we'll include. We'll just say Grant. That's fine. There's a Okay. That's right. Yeah. I already know before we asked. Yep, that's right. Knew him before he was named. <laughs> uh, good. So for Grant, and we are aware that there are younger people right now that are especially seem to be uh, subject to getting COVID and, and getting very sick. Marvin, uh, Jane grew up in Enterprise Church, and since she has been diagnosed with cancer, four more people from that church, all women, have been diagnosed with cancer. At Enterprise, the same kind of cancer or no, different not kinds? The same kind, but yeah. Four more, and all women, four women, four women have been diagnosed wow. with cancer since Jane has been Since she was at Enterprise, huh? Well, let us remember them. Obviously, they as a congregation are traveling through a lot. Yes? I also remember Hallie G because, I mean, she had started that school. But they've had a lot of people that had to get out of quarantine. She didn't because she wears her mask regardless of whether they tell her to or not. But I think the majority of third grade class was quarantined. Thank you for Haley Jean. It's worse this school year than it was last year. And I know with everybody beginning to return to school, there are a lot of concerns about what the yeah. months ahead look like. There's one school in Wake Forest, they had by half of the school is out. Mm -hmm. so no. it, it concerns me that the kids go back to school and it's optional if they want to wear a mask. Right. It shouldn't be optional. Right, right. So. Yeah. Thank you, Ann. Okay, let us let us pray together. <laughs> treasure and hold too tightly to things that we have accumulated. Many of those things that we may need to live, be they vehicles or home, clothing. And while we know that some of these are necessities of life, there is much to which we cling that we should not. We hold them too close, and at times we grieve when they pass on. We know, gracious God, that you have what we need that is beyond that which is temporal and earthly, that which is spiritual and eternal. It's expressed in the love with which you love us, and it's expressed in the love with which we love one another. And we know that your love is indeed eternal. Help us to cling 
to that bread which is spiritual. As Jesus says in our reading this morning from the Gospel of John, I am the bread. I am the bread of life. And that those who come to me will never hunger. Those who believe in me will never thirst. Help us to discover, to experience, and to see those things which are eternal in our everyday living because they are often clouded over by the things that are temporal to which we feel a need to attend and to take care of. Bless this congregation and its members. We pray for those who are absent from us, for your care over their lives. We pray for your care over our lives, those who have gathered here together today. Watch over us and keep us ever attentive to the needs of those around us, to respect the health and the care of others around us, particularly in this time when there are some renewed concerns about the increase in COVID and the Delta variant. We know that there are those who need our prayers, who may be hospitalized or suffering from that illness or other illnesses at this time. We pray for Grant. We give thanks for surgery past for Sandy and pray for your continued healing grace in her life. We pray for Jane for those who watch over her and care for her in this time of her treatment for cancer, and for those at Enterprise Baptist Church that we've heard of today, women who likewise have been diagnosed with cancer and are receiving tests and treatment. Watch over all who suffer with physical illness, for any who may be passing through the valley of the shadow of death. And we give gratitude for those who care for them, for doctors and nurses and other specialists who are instruments of your healing grace for many. But keep us well in spirit as well as in mind and body. For we know that when the body fails or when the mind fails, that the spirit prevails. We pray for those who are returning to school, for Haley Jean and others, students, administrators, and teachers who are now getting back into the classroom, some from year-round school and others who will soon be going back to school the challenges of what that will mean in this year. We pray for your gentle grace and your wisdom and guidance upon all those who make important decisions in education and in government and in areas of life that serve. Hear these our prayers that we offer you this day. And as we receive that sacrament which you have given to us this morning, we pray that while we receive the bread and the wine, that we might know that these are signs of a deeper and greater gift that you have given to each of us. The gift that lasts for eternity. Hear these prayers that we offer unto you this day, O Lord, and for the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray as we pray that together now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This is a medley of two hymns familiar to us, and whenever you feel inclined to join in, I invite you to do so. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed. Fill it up and make me whole. Take our bread, we ask you, take our hearts, we love you.
to believe in the one he has sent. So they asked him, What sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. <coughs> Sir, they said, always give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now I do want to say to our children back there that if you hang around a minute, if you're able to, right after service, I've got a little message for you, okay? And um, it has to do with this guy that I found in the middle of the road this morning. It's not yours, is it? Okay, we'll hang around. Let us pray. Gracious God, may your word fill us up with the gift of life. In your holy name we pray. Amen. This may seem like an odd question, but it actually fits perfectly with today's gospel reading from John. The question is, do you have a memory of great bread? Do you have a memory of great bread? Well, let me first tell you about my father's memory of great bread, and then I'll tell you about mine. My father, who died a couple of years ago, was one of ten children. And um, he would share his memory about how after they would get home from school, uh, his mother, my grandmother, always would have ready for them um, freshly baked biscuits. And uh, they could probably smell them a block away getting home from school. And he said they would gather around the table together, uh, the ten of them, and um, eat these couple dozen biscuits that she had ready for them after school, probably with some good butter, maybe honey, molasses uh, to add to it. And a number of years ago, um, Beth, my wife Beth, found some biscuits in the grocery that came close to my father's mother's biscuits and would prepare those. And he said, yeah, they, they come close. Probably not quite like his mother's biscuits, but they came close. My memory of great bread is Germany. Um, I lived there a year doing some doctoral work when I was at Duke. It was a exchange program with the University of Bonn with a professor of mine at Duke. And um, on the way to class, those first few days when I would walk to class, um, I smelled the bakery and of course followed my nose, followed the smell and that bakery became my morning stop on the way to class for most of that year. And uh, they had there a loaf of wonderful crusty bread and it was called Mundbrot. Brot means bread in German. Mun is poppy seed. It had a lot of poppy seed on it. Um, but about 8 a.m. it came out of the oven, and I would stop, you know, time it on the way to class, 
and buy that loaf of munbrot and take it with me. Uh, they would often give you a little package of sweet German butter to go with it. And uh, we'd stop beside there to get a cup of coffee. And I, I had all that I needed that morning uh, to get ready for class. It, 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 it wasn't like this food lion hoagie bun at all. Uh, this thing just doesn't cut it. You know, if you read the package that it came in at Food Line, I picked it up this morning, uh, it says crusty. Well, well, this isn't crusty at all. They, they don't know what crusty is. Crusty is when it really just breaks apart and falls everywhere around you. And, and uh, crusty on the outside was that Monbrot, uh, but just so warm and soft on the inside. And um, for a year, I would keep going back every morning to get some of that hot, just out of the oven bread with some sweet German butter. And I was convinced that you could live on bread alone. I mean, that lasted me through the class throughout the day. It was lunch until the next morning when I would stop and get some more on my way to class. Remember the Exodus story from the Old Testament when Moses is leading the people of God through the wilderness and, and they're running out of food and getting hungry and they start complaining to Moses and Moses appeals to God and, and God drops down from heaven this manna. This manna is, is some strange flaky stuff that they had never seen before. It wasn't part of their regular diet. It was some flaky stuff that had come down from heaven. Some, some scholars suggest that it was sweet insect excrement, if you can believe that. But it was some kind of flaky substance. And in the Hebrew for mana, there's, there is a, a, a pun, um, a similar word in Hebrew which translated means something like, whatchamacallit. <laughs> uh, they didn't know what it was. They'd never seen it before. It was something extraordinary, something strange and different, this man of this flaky substance from heaven. Before I went to Germany that year, I usually ate that plain old loaf bread. You know that stuff you buy in the bags and slice. It's pretty good in the summertime with tomato and Duke's mayonnaise. Uh, but the rest of the year, it's not all that great to me. It's just plain old sliced bread. But when you taste that sweet manna from heaven, like God's people did, or you, you taste that freshly baked, crusty Monbrot from a German bakery, you taste something out of the ordinary. You taste something extraordinary, something really different, something you'll never forget the taste of. I mean, you almost want to go back to Germany on a plane just to get that crusty one rod. And that's why the crowd in our reading for today and John keep coming back to Jesus. Like I kept going back every morning to that bakery. Jesus had, had satisfied something in them. It satisfied their hunger. He had fed 5,000 people. Jesus had given them what they so much wanted and needed. They had been hungry, literally. They were hungry and Jesus had given them bread. And he gave them so much, an endless supply, even leftovers, that it satisfied them. But when they got hungry again, as our scripture tells us this morning, they came back to Jesus for more. Kind of like keep going back to that bakery. It was addictive. They had something that you wanted, that you needed, that satisfied me. When I left Germany, I remember that there was some sense of of missing the people, the landscape, the culture, but, but I think I really miss the bread most of all. 
the taste of that bread, I guess you could say, abided with me. It stuck with me. And what Jesus gave those people must have abided with them because they came back to him for more. And Jesus had more to give. But this time it wasn't manna or bread or the hot crusty one brought. It was, as we read, it was spiritual bread. It was the bread of life. And Jesus said to them, as he says to us today, I am the bread of life. I am the bread from heaven which abides forever. If you come to me, you will never be hungry. And if you believe in me, you will never be thirsty. John uses that Greek <coughs> word to abide. Minum, to abide. To stick with you. Just like the taste of that, of that Mumbrot and that German bakery sticks with me. John uses that word all the time throughout his gospel to stick with, to abide to stay with. When Jesus is baptized at the very beginning of his gospel, we read that the Spirit abided on Jesus. It remained on Jesus. It abided on Jesus throughout his life and ministry. And John talks about the vine and the branches and how one abides in the other. The, the Son abides in the Father and the Father in the Son and the Son in us and me in the Son. The same word abides. It sticks with you. It's there forever. And so Jesus says, when you first came to me, I gave you your fill of the loaves. And you were satisfied. But you came back because that kind of bread perishes. It's temporary, it's earthly. And tomorrow you'll want some more because you'll be hungry again. And tomorrow you'll go buy that bakery again and you'll buy another loaf of one broth because after a number of hours without it, you're hungry for it again. Because it's the bread that doesn't abide. It's the bread that perishes. But the bread, Jesus says, that I will give you abides for life eternal. The true bread. The true bread from heaven. And you will never again be hungry. It's just like the water in the Gospel of John, the woman at the well, and, and Jesus says, you're coming here every day to draw this water, and yet you're thirsty again. But the water I will give you will well up inside of you and you will never be thirsty again. In our lives where there's so much that's temporal, so much that's earthly that we cling to, we so much need that which sticks with us, that which abides that which is eternal, that's way beyond the temple stuff. In this sacrament, Jesus offers to us that which is eternal. Even symbolically, or as a sign, this, what is said to be crusty bread, which really isn't crusty from food lion, it's a sign to us that when it is broken, as Jesus' body was broken, it is for life eternal. It is a gift given to us, which fills us up and which we will never be hungry again. 
because Jesus gives us all that we need beyond that which we accumulate. Hear now these words as we prepare to share in this sacrament. Almighty God, you formed us in your image and you breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity and made covenant to be our sovereign God. You spoke to us through your prophets. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. He healed the sick, he fed the hungry, he ate with sinners, and by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, he gave birth to the church. And he has delivered you and me from slavery to sin and death. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, 